gentlemen, does evil disprove God? Some atheists say it does. While Though some atheists always saying stuff. My big question, when making your video on evil, how many monitors hawking your book is too many? Can you have too many? I think the answer must be no. Hi, this is Scarlett, and I'm an atheist and skeptic, and we're back looking at some vintage Frank Turek. Today, I have a couple where Frank is going to lecture us on why atheism actually has a problem with the problem of evil, and Christianity has all the solutions. Both of these are kind of old. YouTube says eight years. But Frank is still going around making these same arguments. They are evergreen. Before we hear the arguments, I want to take a moment to appreciate the aesthetics of these videos. I am not sure who conceived of this liminal space and what exactly they are trying to evoke. A 60 Minutes investigative show? A cable news channel? A corporate meeting room meets sports bar? Primarily, I can't get over the multitude of monitors all advertising Frank's book and website. Okay, let's watch the opening again and think about the work that went just into the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, does evil disprove God? Some atheists say it does. While Juicy, right? The sound effects, the mechanical sound, the swooping in. Someone paid some money, I think, for that. So dramatic. I especially like the camera movement with Frank stepping toward the camera. There will be more of that fun, awkward view shift. I'm leaning toward Frank wanting this to be like an investigative show, like one of those murder mystery podcasts. There's a mystery here, and it is about the problem of evil. The visuals all scream, we are a serious news program. We have done our research and are now in his sports bar meeting room to tell you what we found out. But to the question, does evil disprove God? To be clear, the question of evil is about a God who is all-knowing, all-loving, and all-powerful. And it asks, why do bad, terrible, horrible things happen? If God knows they're going to happen, loves said people, and has the power to make a universe of any kind. Why doesn't God stop the bad things? Or better, why did he allow a universe that allows these bad things? And part of the problem of evil is natural disasters. It's not just bad people using their free will to harm others. It is people dying or getting injured in earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, and the like. But the problem of evil does not disprove any and all gods. God may be evil. Maybe God isn't all-powerful, or God isn't all-knowing. Well, let's see what Frank does with this, though. While it is a very difficult and expansive issue, certainly nothing we're going to answer here completely in two minutes, I can say this. I don't think evil can disprove God. In fact, if evil exists, God exists. It's exactly the opposite. Evil disproves atheism. You, say, well, you know we're getting serious. Frank is moving closer to the camera. I like how Frank alludes to this being a bigger question than can be settled in two minutes. I mean, a lot of Christians would just say God works in mysterious ways and call it a day, or God's ways are not our ways, and that only takes a few seconds. But Frank has a whole tap dance to perform here. So surprise, surprise, he doesn't actually represent the argument well, but that's typical Turek, and of course he flips it so it's actually atheists who have a problem. That's cool because it means Frank doesn't have to explain why innocent people suffer horrible events. So let's see why evil is bad for atheists, actually. Just so you know, it's not good. You've been warned. Atheism. You say why? I love the awkwardness of that switch. Mainly, though, I wonder, why did you have to switch cameras at that point? Why this turn? Totally unnecessary. Well... In order for evil to exist, good must exist. But in order for good to exist, in an objective sense, God must exist. Needless to say, I reject all of this, which is just asserted, by the way, not demonstrated, just assumed to be, you know, in Frank's worldview. Frank is appealing to our intuition. So first question, does good exist in an objective way? In my mind, good is an adjective we apply to attributes we find positive in some way. 
And usually bad is the opposite. For example, we say food is good. Like, I love this cheese, it's so good. My child is a good student, which means he or she has good grades, which means they are learning well and showing it to the teachers. Or, my doctor retired. Do you know a good doctor? You know, one that is effective, someone who knows the field and diagnoses illnesses well and knows the treatments. Or, I'm looking for a new car. Which brand is good these days? Good meaning attributes I like, like it's comfortable for however many people I want to seat. It uses fuel efficiently. It's considered safe. It's fast. It doesn't need repairs often. There could be other things you think are good in a car. And of course, we tell our animals they are good doggies and kitties, which means obedient and well-behaved. And they might not be good at everything. You know, the dog might be bad at fetching or the child might be bad at baseball. And we usually think of bad as the opposite. Cheese may go green. A car might have bad brakes and we get in an accident. The doctor may have a terrible bedside manner. Dogs might growl and bite. Students get bad grades. To sum up, good to me is an adjective describing a range of things we humans think are positive, helpful, useful, tasty, and so on. Bad is the opposite, and evil to me is an excess of bad. Thinking agents describe the world, and these words exist because we want to describe the world. But in the absence of an agent to think and talk about the world, to make judgments, good and evil don't exist. Let's hear more from Frank before we go on. So evil doesn't disprove God because you wouldn't even know what evil was unless good existed and you wouldn't know what good existed unless God himself existed because God is the standard of good. Is that true? So first, for me, these are adjectives to describe our experiences. And I think we don't need any God to apply the word good to cheese or students' grades or a dog that is behaving well. A standard, to me, is something we can measure against. We don't know God. How can we measure anything against God, much less good? And since evil, to me, is also an adjective we attribute to people and circumstances caused by people that are excessively bad, that cause wanton pain and suffering, it may be we need to have a notion of good, but also a notion of bad for us to say that something is excessively bad. I know our Western philosophical tradition has us primed to think in these stark opposites, but really things exist along a spectrum. Let's keep moving. Evil doesn't disprove God. It may prove there's a devil out there, but it can't disprove God. Now, but this is where I wonder how theists like Frank conceive of good and evil. Are they an energy, a force made of waves or molecules, a being? Does Frank think every adjective exists as a platonic form created by God? I feel like I could say that grumpiness can only exist if cheerfulness can exist. And for cheerfulness to exist in some objective way, leprechauns exist. And if leprechauns exist, bringing cheerfulness, trolls bring grumpiness. Now, we can ask a lot of questions as why would a good God allow evil to continue? And that's what we do in the book, Stealing from God, Why Atheists Need God to Make Their Case. So if you want to go much deeper into that topic, you can. Here, Frank avoids the real issue at the heart of the problem of evil. Why would the triomni god Frank believes in allow suffering? Buy Frank's book to get the answer to that. But the main point here is evil can't disprove God because evil requires good and good requires God. In fact, C.S. Lewis put it this way. He said, the shadows prove the sunshine. In order to have shadows, you have to have sunshine. Oh, you can have sunshine without shadows, but you can't have shadows without sunshine. You can have good without evil, but you can't have evil without good. So evil doesn't disprove God. It actually shows God exists. Rock in conclusion. Didn't we all enjoy the camera work, Frank turning to a different camera, the camera moving around to make all this more interesting? I wonder if they use that top area as an interview space. I'm focusing a little on the aesthetics because a lot of apologists borrow their studio look from other genres and it gives the appearance of seriousness. Also, they say the same things over and over and they reinvent the form to make it seem like the message is new, the message is not new. And to talk a little on this analogy of light and shadow, does that work for anybody out there? To me, a shadow is what is created when an object with some solidity blocks light. 
and light is waves. So the waves are simply not hitting the space behind the solid object because the solid object is blocking them. Evil is not simply an absence of good. It is an act of choice to create excessive harm, pain, and suffering to other feeling beings. People who do evil can also do good things. Think of the pastor or priest who can do some nice things like organize a charity drive, bring comfort to a sick person, but also can molest children or sexually abuse adults in the congregation. To be clear, the problem of evil is not a problem that atheists have because we do not posit some agent that chose this universe and is in control of it. For me, we live in a natural world with active natural forces that sometimes harms life on this planet. And there are people who choose to harm others. And to be clear, I do not think that evil is a force or an energy or is embodied in any way by anything. It is, as well as good, just a description of the actions we take on Earth. That's all. Let's move on to the next video on Evil 2, where Frank touches on a different problem. The visuals in this one are amazing, too. I was doing an I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist seminar at Michigan State not long ago, and I knew there was an atheist in the audience because he sat there like this the entire two hours. And look, I had some pretty funny jokes in there, and he didn't laugh at any of them. I do think Frank is an effective speaker, and this little moment is one reason why. He does have a good voice, and he has evocative descriptions, and then he adds these little touches of humor. I appreciate this line about his jokes. It's fun. But a good storyteller doesn't mean reliable witness or accurate accounting of anything. And how about a word on the visuals? Why do you think they went with this pendulum of a camera shot? Is it to say no to Frank's verbiage? To make the viewer dizzy so they can't tell Frank makes no sense? Also note the touches of authority on the video. Frank was at a university doing a seminar, and now he's standing on what looks like a university campus as he speaks. It not only illustrates his story, but it adds that veneer of authority. He's there. He is like a professor. As much as conservatives talk about how awful college is, they certainly love to draw on it and have that mantle of authority when they can. Laugh at any of them. Anyway, I knew when the Q&A started, his hand would be the first to go up. Sure enough, it went up. He said, if there is a good God, why doesn't he stop all the evil in the world? Angry atheist, am I right? Anyway, we're very close to formulating the problem of evil here. But remember, it's not just a good God. It is one that is also all-knowing and all-powerful. And it's not stopping the evil. It's the fact that God allows it. This is a nuanced change, I know. And maybe somebody will say I'm nitpicky. But for me, the point is... Why did this tri-omni God create a world and a universe where pain and suffering exist? I'm not thinking of God like a superhero that swoops in when evil's about to happen. Oh, that volcano is about to erupt. Better stop it. Or bad guy is about to harm someone. Better fly in. That's not it. Why is the volcano there in the first place? Why is the bad guy allowed to exist in the first place? Let's keep going. And I said, sir, that is an excellent question. Because if he did, he might start with you and me. Because we do evil every day. Do we? Do we do evil every day? Again, I wonder how Frank is defining evil. To me, evil is excessive. A person who does an evil action has a wanton disregard for the well-being of other sentient beings. If we do evil every day, then to me it is meaningless. Do we even necessarily do harm every day? And I do know that for Christians like Frank, humans are sinful creatures. I've discussed on this channel how I don't accept sin as a category of behavior. Humans have the capacity to bring happiness and joy to others as well as the ability to harm them. It is our accumulated choices that pile up to the good or the bad category that would define us as a good person or a bad person, sort of a pattern of behavior. But also, going back to the question of evil, it's not about God stopping us. Why did he create us that way to begin with? Granted, the God of the Garden of Eden didn't seem to know what was going to happen, but Christians posit an all-knowing God who knew what he was creating. Why did he do that if he could produce a world without suffering? 
You see, we're always talking about the other guys out there. Why doesn't God stop him or why doesn't God stop her? We never think about the evil we do every day. First off, I'm not wondering why this God doesn't stop other people. I'm trying to decide logically if the God Frank says exists can exist in the way he's portraying. I'm looking at the logical consistency of this being and wondering if it is a triomni God. And if so, why is this the world he created? Granted, I don't believe in the God. I'm just looking at this as an interesting logical question. And the answers people like Frank come up with tell me a lot about their worldview. Second, I ask again, are we really doing evil every day? What evil are we doing? Please elucidate this point. Or are we supposed to just fill in the blank, whatever we think is going on? It's just in our heads. We can't even know what Frank Turk is thinking, but maybe it's the same thing. But I think this is here to put people on the defensive. Oh, I'm doing evil every day. Oh no, how do I stop? Frank Turek, help me. If God were to stop evil today, he would have to take away our free will because in our fallen nature, we would choose evil if we have free will and we do. If he takes away our free will, we can't do evil, but we can't love either. Oh my gosh, he went through that so fast. Now, if you have your bingo cards out, you can cover your fallen nature and free will squares right now. Go ahead and do it. But to recap, Frank is trying to make a logical statement. Our fallen nature makes us choose evil. So the fact that we choose evil means we have a fallen nature. This is all self-reinforcing. And granted, we don't know what evil he has in mind because apparently we all do it every day, all the time. But the other point he's making is that we need free will to love. If we don't have free will, we can't love. Why? How does loving someone connect with free will? I need more explanations, Frank. Either. So God gives us free will so we can love him. We have Oh, so the loving part is only about loving God. And by that, I guess Frank means choose to follow God. Do we choose to love? I have the impression that we don't choose who or what we love. We just love. I did not make an active choice of loving anyone. Like, And when I say I love pizza, let's say, I put it in my mouth and it produces an enjoyable sensation. I didn't choose that. Or my kitties. I don't know why I love them. I just do. Or all the people in my life. I did not make an active choice to, to love them. I just love them. I have made choices in how I express that love, but not the actual emotion, no. And love him. We have free will now to make an ultimate choice to be with God in eternity or not to choose God for all eternity. If we choose to be with God, we will still have free will in heaven, but we'll have no reason to sin because we won't lack anything we want. That's novel. We have free will in heaven, but we won't choose wrong because we won't lack for anything. So the question becomes, why don't we have that now on earth? Why didn't God choose a universe where people didn't need to use their free will to harm people? If he can do it for heaven, give us everything we need so we don't lack anything, why can't he do it here? And why does it matter that we have to wait for heaven for that? Why can't that happen here in our physical bodies? I know Frank wants us to think that we choose God and we choose to love God, but there have been a lot of people who have existed who were totally unaware of Frank's God. They didn't or still don't have the opportunity to make a choice. How does that factor into Frank's apologetics? And for those of us atheists who can't make ourselves believe and can't get the various apologists' blatherings to cohere, how come God can't help us out? with some way to make this mess all make sense. So evil exists because free will exists, and free will is necessary for there to be love at all. Evil exists because free will exists, and free will is necessary for love. Neat. How did you demonstrate this? Oh, you just asserted it. I guess I go back to what is evil for Frank? What is love? Is evil a force or a spirit or an energy? If it exists in some form like that, then it exists whether or not we have free will. And then what is love? Does Frank really think we choose to love? And what good is free will if we don't understand what it is we're choosing? We're just supposed to blindly choose God, Frank's God, of course, 
believe what the human messengers tell us about what it is we're choosing. Well, I guess I could say the leprechauns need us to be cheerful if we want the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And if we're grumpy, we will be fed to the trolls. Amen. I think that Frank's blibbity blab about the problem of evil in these two videos does not add up. You know, flipping it so that atheists are ones with the problems, not Christians, and all of this free will stuff. First, he's dealing with presumption on what evil is and doesn't even consider what an atheist might think. Second, he really is just reading the free will script, and not even all that well. No amount of college backdrop can lend authority to this mess of apologetics. But what do you think about anything Frank said? Put it in the comments below. And while you're down there, use your free will to like and subscribe and do all the YouTube stuffing if you didn't already use your free will to do that on a different video. And if you like what I do, you can buy me a coffee. That link is also in the description below, and I will see you next time for something different. Bye for now.